Okay. Okay, today is January 8th, Friday, 2021. This is the dev sync. Uh, so we're going to go through and do our usual uh, roundup, see how things are going. Uh, we'll start with uh, Josh, snuck in at the top right corner of my screen. There you go. I am on my lunch break, just to clarify. Uh, I, I don't have a whole lot other than uh, I am wait, continue to wait for a demo video. Um, we did get, uh, our ordering is complete for the Mark II and we have identified a ship date of February 26th as the drop dead date for shipping those dev kits. So those will be in the mail moving to people by then. Uh, between now and then we have some stuff on the business side to do to queue up um, you know, who gets what first and when and why and how and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, that's all I really have. Uh, Panacor and the other team seem to be doing a good job getting uh, from here to there. All right, great. Uh, Gez? Um, yeah, did some work uh, yesterday. I was looking at the, you know, how we're triggering the Wi-Fi Connect um, screens. And I mean, uh, soon we'll want to have those triggering off the button in the on-screen um, Wi-Fi setup flow based on the design that Derek put out. Um, uh, but I also, but for the moment I've like, I've thrown that into the enclosure so that, that the enclosure now calls it, uh, well, the enclosure sends a, a message bus message that will trigger it, um, whether based upon whether the device is connected to the internet or not. So it'll either trigger that or trigger the pairing skill. And then when the Wi-Fi setup's complete, then it'll trigger the pairing skill. Um, uh, and if the pairing is complete already, then it won't do anything. But if it's not, you know, it'll it'll check that. Um, so it's kind of hard for me to test the changes until I get till I get my new hardware next week. But um, uh, and we also need to um, fix the issue where only um, Pentecost thing takes over and and doesn't um, doesn't let the existing on-screen Wi-Fi setup work, but that might be working now. I haven't tested the newest build that these guys might have tested. So, um, anyway, so that was the main thing yesterday. Uh, um, more Voight comp stuff. <laughs> we uh, need to get some. Well, we really need to update core. Is the is the first thing. To get that working, um, and I, I, we do start need to start looking at the twenty one oh two changes for core because um, that's coming up quite soon. Um, uh, yes, I did balk the Panacore build for a short period too, but it sounds like that's fixed now. So, okay, I think that's me. So a uh, quick question here. Uh, so there's two high-level goals that we need to clear uh, with respect to the Pantacore stuff. And the first one is uh, just making the image work at all, right? And the second one is being able to update that image, um, you know, using the Pantacore's update system. Uh, where are we with respect to both of those goals? Uh, so being able to update it is as simple as hitting a play button in the pipeline, in the CI pipeline. Uh, so number two is tick. Number one is, well, number two is, is tick. There's a lot more detail in terms of like, you know, that's just to trigger a nightly build and then and then we need to look at the, the process beyond that. But um, uh, for development purposes, that's a tick. Um, and for the first, I think, Let's hear from Chris and Ken first, and that'll, that'll All right. Fair enough. get more All right. Yeah. Well, let's go there. Uh, Chris. Yeah, bro, I spent my day playing with my device, um, rebooting it and reflashing it and all that good stuff. Um, I a couple of th and one thing I'm trying to do is to find the right place to put log messages in our uh, speech process so that I can identify why the initial boot fails um, in the mic process. So um, that's going to be a time-consuming process because every time I put log messages in, I we have to 
merge them into the Mark II build, and then we have to uh, get a get their CI process running and get another build and test that and see where it's failing. And it might take three or four iterations of that um, before I really pinpoint where the issue is. Since it's on boot, first boot, it has to be off a fresh image. <laughs> um, I can't just you know put the log messages in and and reboot and you know, restart it. So um, like I usually can. Um, so I, I'm working on that. Um, I, I tested the uh, config changes to 48K um, and 32 bits for our mic and found that the um, we took up some serious CPU power uh, when we did that. Um, the, the speech process like tripled its CPU utilization um, by reading all that data. So uh, I think the current plan is to back down on that for now. Um, the other reason being that um, there's uh, all the, the older values are permeated throughout the system. Um, so we'll need to probably just have an effort uh, to figure out when we want, when and how we want to do um, to use our, our better mics. Um, I also found, and I'm not, there's on the Panic Core channel and Gav, I'm not sure where this is, but um, I was trying to test some of the skills and the changes I had made to the daytime skill, for example, were not in the image. And I, I, I went down to the skills um, directory and it was 34 commits behind master or behind 2008. So I don't know why those aren't getting updated or how we need to get those updated in the, in the image, but um, it looks like they're using a pretty, a somewhat old version of those skills right now. Um, yeah, it's based on what's in the marketplace. So we, we do need to go back. We need to get in and update a lot of things in the marketplace, not just in the, in the skill repo itself. Okay. All right, so yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing. Um, so I will continue to work on um, figuring out why the first boot doesn't work um, tomorrow. And um, I'm putting my device through paces. I'm, Derek is, um, well, actually, uh, Johnny was in Lawrence today and, and picked up a bunch of parts from Derek for me. So I'm going to have a, uh, my new build, my new uh, device. I'll get that set up. And um, yeah, just keep troubleshooting until we get it happy. Okay. Um, so uh, before I jump into to Ken here next, um, I want to interject. Um, so there's a bit of confusion about this 16 kilohertz versus 48 kilohertz sampling. Uh, the XMOS chip actually only samples the two microphones at 16 kilohertz. So Ooh. it uh, it uses a 48 kilohertz output only because that's the input we're giving it. Right, so it, it has to use a, it's a synchronous bus, so it has to use the same sample rate on the output as input. Um, but how it packs the data into that 48 kilohertz is very programmable, and so we should. Uh, I'd like uh, Ken, I think, is probably the right person to look into uh, the data sheet and see how that data is being packed. Because if you're getting an actual 48 kilohertz signal back, what it says is that that's just uh, duplicated data. It's not interpolated. It's not anything. So you could just take every fourth sample, for example or every third sample to get down to a 16 kilohertz sample, right? Um, and so that might save a lot of processing overhead and whatnot. So there may be other things we can do as well uh, to uh, to reduce the uh, the data being passed around there. So um, I'll get with you on the, uh, uh, I'll, I'll send you the data, the data sheet link again, and you can take a look at that. So there is no 48 kilohertz available at all uh, in terms of mic input. Well, then I'm glad we're going back to 16. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, Ken. You saw me? Yeah, Ken, you're you're up. Oh, okay. Yeah, and and uh, the other thing is, I still need to understand. I mean, right now the um, system, our system, automatically grabs the default input device, and it's not clear to me that's mapping to the proper one of the two input channels. So that's, there's some, still some experimentation and work to be done there. That being said, um, I'm glad it's Friday. Today was a good and a bad day. I woke up. I have, 
I hate Snap. I have, uh, I run Ubuntu and I have Snap constantly running, chawing up my CPU. I went to bed last night, everything worked fine. I was running 2004. I wake up, I'm magically running 2010, and all of a sudden my network adapter doesn't show up anymore. Interestingly enough, I have a Broadcom adapter. I have, I have a Mac. And it turns out that the newer versions of Ubuntu, of which we're running, are concerned about, um, I guess, app armor and illegal code. And it turns out that the Broadcom firmware is considered their proprietary IP. So fortunately, I guess people in the Linux community saw this coming and they actually had an open source version of the Broadcom firmware and handlers for my chip, but that's something we should be aware of moving forward. Um, anyway, so I finally, it took me two hours to get my laptop back online, and then when I burned the new image, it took me a couple hours because I didn't realize the screens weren't there, so I thought it was hung because I didn't see the, uh, the, uh, the keyboard, and then the other problem was that I tried to burn onto an SD card, and this image won't run on an SD card. So after overcoming all of that, I finally upgraded to the latest version of the Panacore image, um, you know, set, set everything back, and, ran, and I've been running it for three or four hours. Now, I didn't see, I didn't have the luxury of seeing on initial boot whether it worked or not. It seemed to, but I couldn't get in. Uh, I couldn't SSH in because that was another problem. I, have real, I didn't realize that image came from the dev account and all of that good stuff, so I didn't get my key. So it was a lot of wasted time. The good news, that's the bad news. The good news is the image has been running wonderfully for four or five hours. Um, other than the bring up issue and no gas, it's not fixed. It still just sits there spinning and you have to know to go to your phone. It doesn't tell you anything audibly or anything. Um, and so I'm being, I'm a little simple minded and that took me off guard. But uh, yeah, so that's not fixed in this version of the build, but, and I'll, I'll reburn it from scratch and see if I can figure out why it's not coming up on first bill, uh, first boot. But my my rough assessment of that is twofold. The first is that's probably a Panacore image. The second is it's not uncommon to just have it boot twice. How my router does that, probably for the same bug. <laughs> so if that's all it takes to get this thing fixed, I don't know. We need to spend a lot of time on that. Tell Panacore to fix it and move on. As far as precise goes. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll be looking into that, but more from the wake word stuff. I had to uh, stop that in the middle of something last week, and it seems like I can probably shift back to that on Monday and start working on the back end wake word stuff. So I, I think everything's looking pretty good. Um, at some point, Michael, if you wanted me to, I certainly could go through and pull out the one channel of mic input from the input stream and pull out every third frame from the input buffer. Um, so we could do that, but... Yeah, I mean, the concern is when you have it showing up and reported to the system as 48K, you're going to get, as Chris and I saw, interrupts at period frequency. So you're still going to get three times the interrupts. I do know that the problem, uh, or I believe the problem is that because you're calling into a Python code chain from a low-level driver on those on that mic input, that when precise wakes up, that's where I saw it. When I run it outside of core and I just run precise, I see it reset the hardware almost after every recognized wake word because I guess the callback is not fast enough. So, you know, at least that's fixed for now. I was looking for whether we're overflowing it somewhere else, but I really think it's because our callback just can't go fast enough. There probably could be some coding to to make maybe make that a little more economical, so it could kind of cue it and then go back, and you know leave uh, you know kind of shift out of that thread, and then maybe that'd work. But that's going to take some work. So I don't know that that's important right th right now. It seems like if we're, we're trying to get dev kits out, it seems like we can get this initial boot thing working. We should be good to go with this. The hardware looks good. Everything seems to be working as advertised. So. Yeah, and that's that's where I'm at. And unless you tell me something other than that, Michael, I'll go back to working on the uh, the wake word continuous integration pipeline on Monday. Right. Okay. Well, yeah, I'll uh, like I said, I'll, I'll send you the info on the the XMOS low level programming just uh, just to make sure we're we know exactly what we're dealing with. Um, but that should be pretty straightforward. Uh, okay, uh, Derek. 
you know, um, yeah, today has been kind of hit or miss. <laughs> uh, so this morning I was working on some hardware stuff. Uh, Chris um, got some stuff for Chris. He uh, wanted a, an extra enclosure and, um, you know, I've been trying to get him a fully assembled V5 as well. So I threw in some extra parts for him. So he should be able to have two sets now. Um, Johnny should be taking that to you tonight. And um, yeah, Johnny came up this morning, so we met a little bit and talked about getting the stuff to Joe. Um, and I went ahead and cut uh, an enclosure for Joe as well. He said he didn't really need it, but um, I thought it was, it was smart to throw it in so he could test putting in the threaded inserts and see how long it actually takes. Um, so yeah, I got that to him. And as I was doing that, I realized the parts coming off the laser cutter weren't... Uh, weren't exactly uh, correct. So they, they assembled okay, but they're, uh, the laser is cutting rhombuses instead of uh, squares right now. So uh, I think um, I think that's gonna have to be um, something's, something's on going on there needs to be looked at. So it might be down on the laser cutter until I can figure out why it can't cut a 90 degree angle. Um, <clears throat> but it should be fine for, for Joe to explore with. Uh, let's see. I did realize something. The nuts that we bought from Bolt Depot are too big for our enclosure. Um, so we're going to have to get some different nuts. Um, I should have, I should have, uh, made the tolerance not so tight on that. I should have made them a little bit bigger, but those are already being cut. So can't really go back and change that now. Um, Uh, let's see. And then I was trying to get, you know, yesterday I told you guys I was going to try and get these two boards up and going. Well, I did get, um, I did get them kind of tested, but most of the time I was screwing around trying to get the USB boot to work. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I can't, I can't get a USB boot to work. It's working fine off SD card, so that's good. Um, I don't know. Maybe we need to settle on an official way to do this, or Josh share your, your like script or however that works. I did. I checked. I checked it into the, or I gave it for checking in the repo. It should be available along with the image to do it. Okay. Well, you might need to tell me how to do it then because I'm not sure how to do that. Um, so, yeah, that's been my day. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't have much of an update. Um, I've just been uh, in communication with the PCBA company just to make sure that the uh, the boards are going to come in on time and that looks good and um, yeah that's pretty much it for me the uh, so Derek and Josh maybe you guys want to hang out for just a few minutes maybe Josh can step you through how to do that update um, but uh, are there any other uh, issues people want to bring up or talk about no I want to say I think we're looking better than we have in quite a while. Yeah, I think things are going to uh, break loose here pretty quickly. You know, we've got a number of actually working hardware bits in the, uh, out in you know people's hands now, and uh, we're going to have another 10 or so here in a week. Um, as we get the samples back from the fab, and assuming those work out fine, then we'll have another several hundred. Uh, so um, we'll have plenty of stuff on which to uh, start really cranking on the software side of things. Yeah, I did notice that once we get through the um, precise stuff, um, there are still several UX things with, um, you know, with the device that we need to address from a scale standpoint and from a GUI standpoint. But, um, you know, those and maybe a tune-up of the skills and all that good stuff. And, you know, I mean, really, we had to get to this point to move forward and now start looking at it as a product versus as a piece of hardware. So, yeah. But yeah, I know that's not, um, you know, for the dev kits, I know it's not a problem, but I know whatever we come up with for a date for the consumer devices, we should have all those little niggles worked out. Michael, are we going to offer this to Pi uh, through the Pi store? Possibly try to get it in the Pi store? The hat? I don't, we just really don't have enough units, to be honest. I think wow. pretty much everything we're, everything we're building is pretty much sold already. Um, so we might have... We're breaking up. Everything we have is what already? Everything is... The, Pretty much everything. We, we, we don't have enough units. 
we've, we've, so we've sold like, you know, everything we're building at the moment is like for backers mostly. And then we will have a few more, um, uh, that we'll be able to, to put up for sale, but it's, it's not very many. So, um, you know, I think, I think it's a, something that we should look to in the future is like, how do we just, you know, we're, we're clearly not the only people that had this problem of like audio, good audio is hard um without you know going to a whole bunch of different places and so um i think they'll be, they'll will be interested in this sort of stuff um but it's more of like how do we set up that that whole end-to-end -end process um, yeah the distribution channel all i was getting at is uh just because you want to get in the pie store doesn't mean you'll get in there this year so you know it might take some time maybe you have to send them a couple but it is a hat and it's a pie hat and pie hats are popular so yeah and and it's a good device once we get all the kinks ironed out of it we could probably you know make some money just selling these um yeah possibly but you know we've got we've got other issues you know some of the chips that we're using on this board are um are just not available anymore like we bought the last inventory of of a lot of these chips mm. so, uh, so we've got a you know we've got to deal with the normal factory lead times for the for the next order so i think my cool. friend was saying the voltage regulator we're using is very old and super solid and everybody uses it but there's cheaper ones out there now that perform almost as well so stuff like that yeah yeah exactly there's there's some tweaks we can make to the board uh for sure but uh but just in terms of like the design that we have um it's not that the parts are well it's not that the parts aren't being produced anymore it's just that they're they're allocated so mm. you know, yeah we have to make our own order from the factory and the lead time and that is you know 28 weeks all i was getting at is we're wow entering into the realm of hardware manufacturer and we have a product that could be viable at some point and sold in st standard distribution channels get over to you know digikey and all those guys so whatever yeah well, 20 yeah. weeks because it's plenty of time to fix the ux issues <laughs> for sure i've started i had i've had some chats with like one distributor one australian distributor and they were pretty ex pretty interested in stuff um so i think i think there's definitely I think people will definitely be willing to do it, um, but it's you know it's also like for the bigger guys you need you obviously need to be able to provide a certain number and and you know have a whole lot of stuff in place that we just don't have. So um, yeah, and when we can't yet promise them, and if they believe our promise, then they're idiots. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So beyond the dev kit order, um, you know the uh we're still working on the plan for you know the second quarter of, of uh uh production so. yeah just food for thought mm. okay well um all right anything else people want to bring up questions concerns school starts up back here in uh in california uh next week so that'll be fun are they actually going to school oh of course not uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's terrible here. Like, there are no ICU beds in California, or LA anyway, right now. Like, well, they're, they're telling the ambulances to not pick up people that they don't think are going to make it. So, yikes. Yeah. It's, and it's not even the worst it's going to get. So, yeah. Anyway. Um, so, yeah. So, stay safe out there. And, uh, yeah, our kids will be going to school remotely which is always fun. So, um, all right, well, we'll meet up again on Monday. Thanks, everybody.